So, um, last night I saw one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, it's actually not from this year. It's from, from 2000. Um, it was, here's the key. It was called, uh, Love and Basketball, which somehow I never saw like when it was new. I don't know how I missed it because I'm an idiot, I guess. Um, but anyways, it has uh, Sanaa Lathan and Omar Epps in it, and they were both amazing. Sanaa Lathan is, like, the greatest actress. Um, I got to see it at the Cine Family um, on the big screen. They have this new series they're doing called uh, Girl on Girl, and it's it's sponsored by Wifey TV, which is uh, run, I believe, by Jill Soloway. She was she was there at, right before the movie started, um, or when the movie ended. I can't remember now. Um, she's got a new TV show, Transparent, which I haven't seen yet, and, um, it's on Amazon Prime, and she did Afternoon Delight, which I also didn't see somehow, um, everyone told me I, I would love it, but I missed it, so anyways, um, she was there, and I can't remember the name of the woman, I want to say it's Roxanne Gay, who did the Q&A at the end of the movie with the director, uh, Gina Prince by Wood. And, God, they were both so intelligent and so fun, and it was, like, one of the best Q&As I've ever seen. And I've seen quite a few Q&As, um, like, everywhere, but also at the Cine Family, and this was one of the best I've, like, ever seen. They were really great questions, really great answers, two just insanely smart women talking about the creative process and the state of cinema, and, oh, it's just amazing, and I can't wait for this series to continue. I'm going to go to, like, all of them. Um, okay, so Love and Basketball, she was talking about how when she wrote it, that um, it was a very personal story for her. She used to play basketball herself um, and didn't play professionally, or didn't play in college because she was recruited a few places, but she wanted to go to UCLA um, to study cinema, and so she wasn't recruited by UCLA, so she didn't play in college so that she could you know, study what she wanted to study, which is, like, that's such a Sophie's choice right there. Um, and I forgot to ask her, dang it, I really wanted to know what, uh, movie she saw that was, like, the light bulb movie, you know, that made her want to make films. Um, because I got to talk to her when it was over, and it was, like, amazing. She's such a smart woman. She's got a new movie coming out in, um, November called Beyond the Lights with Gugu Mbatha-Ra, who was the star of Belle, who's amazing, and apparently was at the screening, and I didn't see her, and I'm like, forever crying about it, because she's such a great actress. Um, so look forward to that one. I will definitely be seeing that in theaters. Um, back to Love and Basketball. I'm all over the place. She, so, she said when she was writing it that, um, she wanted to reject the three-act structure, and so it's, it's in these four quarters, like a basketball game, but then she also said that it sort of, if you really break it down, it really is the three-act structure, structure mixed into the four quarters. Um, and so the first part of the movie is uh, them as little kids, the main characters, and them meeting and her being way better at basketball than he is and he can't handle it. And then it's them in high school and it's there's some just great moments. Like, Sanaa Lathan is one of the best actresses I've seen at showing the awkwardness of being a woman. You know, like, we get a lot of, of women in, in films who are... Um, very comfortable in their bodies and very comfortable in their sexuality. Oftentimes, especially when they're in films by men, their that sexualization of women is is overt and turns them into objects, and it's it's just awful. Um, and then you have uh, like the you know the Madonna whore thing. And then you have like good girls who um, are sort of. Uh, the opposite of that, and, and they're not usually the ones that the husbands end up marrying and everything. But um, in this, she's just she's just an awkward teenage girl at first, and it's like so perfect because um, you really felt like she was an awkward teenage girl who was really good at what she did, but really awkward dealing with people and um, sort of like in something new. Like Sonali then really gets that emotion across, and I, it was really nice to see. Um, and she had such great chemistry with Omar Epps, like, wow. Um, and I realized that Alfie Woodard played her mom in this, and she played her mom in something new also, so. Cinema family, sort of like Jimmy Stewart and, um, 
what's her name that played his mom in four movies? Oh God, I just forgot. Uh, so, where was I going? This is the third quarter is them in college and he's all, you know, upset because she's putting herself before the two of them and it's like, oh, heaven forbid that you put your career before in your relationships. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the fourth quarter is them coming back together after they're professional basketball players. And uh, I didn't realize that most of the film took place um, in the 80s and early 90s before the WNBA. And so when I first knew about this movie, I knew that the WNBA had existed. So I assumed that it was like set contemporarily with the WNBA. And it totally wasn't, which gave you all kinds of uh, strife and things because... You know, to be a professional woman, first she wanted to be the first woman in the NBA, and obviously they still haven't done that because you can't integrate, you know, women into male sports. It's mm, not going to have that happen. And then, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, so then she um, has to go, in order to play professionally, you have to go to friggin' Europe. I did not know that. That was interesting um, to learn. And, and, you know, must have been incredibly, incredibly isolating for a lot of these women to, like, leave their families in order to do what they love. Uh, and then, kind of spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, the WIBA exists, and she gets to play basketball and have family, and it's, a, it's beautiful. And there's some great strife between the, like, they show the families of both these, these kids and their aspirations and and what it's like to have be the the parents of people who are going to become professional athletes and I found that really interesting um and there was you know there was a lot with um his father who was played by Dennis Casebert who's like always good and then uh with Sonal Ethan and Alfred Woodard and there's just one scene in the kitchen in the the fourth part of the film that's really tough to watch and really and really interesting because it shows you these layers of, you know, when you're born in a later generation and you can feel those freedoms and you don't realize that maybe your parents' generations didn't have some of the freedoms that you had. So, um, you feel like they're cowards or you feel like they, you resent their life choices. And then you realize that they didn't really have the same choices that you have. And it makes you one, appreciate them more and two, appreciate the freedoms that you have from an older generation more, and I thought that was really, really great. And um, somebody asked, I think uh, the moderator asked Gina if she thought that it was a feminist film, and she said her answer was that if a film about a woman who wants to have it all, who wants to have a career and a family, if that's a feminist film, then heck, heck yeah, it is a feminist film, and I definitely agree. This was, this was a movie about... Um, women who are passionate and women who want to go for what they want and and how tough it can be on men who don't who aren't used to women to being equal with women they're used to having women as a support system and without that men feel sometimes feel threatened and or they feel like how dare you put your life before mine you're supposed to be my support system or whatever and and this sort of takes that into question and says, maybe you're supposed to be my support system, dude. And, or maybe, I don't know, we support each other equally because we're equals. Um, that's very revolutionary. Uh, <laughs> so I loved this movie. I loved it. Um, I want to see the rest of, of Gina Prince Bythewood's movies. She's got that one. I told you it's coming out October, no, November 14th. Um, it's going to be so good. I'm really excited for that. And... I'm looking forward to seeing uh, her films in the middle of her career. And I just, just, it's just, it's a really good time right now for women filmmakers. And there's more and more coming. And if you keep supporting them, they're going to get the money to make more films. And that's really, it's really what we need. That's what, that's what cinema needs these days. That's why everything's so boring. Because we don't have, we have the white dudes just making the same white dude movies. And if we can just, stop supporting those and start supporting the movies written and directed by women cinema will be great again and because it is and it always has been so yes go see go see beyond the lights <laughs>